I don't know where to start on this one really because um, <laughs> it's been part of ongoing communications to Jason Bettles who is Adrian Bronock's bankruptcy trustee. He's from Worrells, forensic accountants. And <laughs> uh, yes, where does one start? Well, I suppose one starts at Insolvency News Online. 2019, this is Jason Bettles down here. He is accused of facilitating a phoenix. Now, he is Adrian Brannock's bankruptcy trustee. He is not the liquidator of Wollombin Horizons. But this is actually indicative of the kind of behaviour that Jason Bettles participates in. So that when he did become Adrian Brannock's bankruptcy trustee, after having several years of prior dealings with him, uh, well, I'll get on to that anyway. So in November 2019, Jason Bettles first appears in the articles about illegal phoenixing. Then in October 2020, Worrell Partner wins round one in Atsik Phoenix fight. Then in July 2020, Worrell Partners seeks to strike out Phoenix in case. So Jason Bettles thinks he's going along quite well. Then we get to the latest version, 26th of February 2021. The corporate regulator has returned to the fray in its ongoing campaign to rub out Jason Bettles, calling for the Worrell's partner to be stripped of his liquidator's ticket and banned for life. Now, you may well ask why are ATSIC, ASIC sorry, so dead set against rubbing out Jason Bettles? Why have they continued for the last two years, even when getting knocked back from the court? They said, no, that's not good enough. We have the evidence. As ATSIC claims, its investigations prove Bettles knowingly assisted a scheme conceived by MAG controllers. Now, the thing is that I'm in possession of communications between Adrian Brannock and Jason Bettles back in February 2016, whereby Adrian Brannock is talking about what Jason Bettles has advised him on. So in communication to Jason Bettles, I raised this with him. And his response is why he gets Dick of the Week. Because if he's not going to take this matter seriously, I'm going to turn it into the joke that matches the letter that I got back from him. <laughs> because it's absolutely pathetic. In the email, I basically asked to chase up on what he had already told me, to confirm that he had actually taken action and reported Adrian Brannock to the relevant body in the breach of his bankruptcy conditions. And all I asked for was a case file number. Didn't have to give me any details at all, just a case file number that would validate that it had actually been lodged. Now here's the thing, Jason Battles. If you had actually given me a case number, you would actually know that it is useless to me other than to pass on to other people in the department and say, what did you do? And then they'd come back and they'd say, well, we can't tell you anything. It's confidential. So you would have found out that giving me that case file number is kind of redundant in the fact that all it was is I was asking for a case file number to confirm that you had done what you had said you had done. Now rather than provide that case file number, you tell me to go and lodge my own complaint. 
at Atsi. That I'm not talking about me lodging a complaint. I'm asking you about what the case file number is or the, the ticket number, whatever number, when you lodged that complaint, whatever number they gave you, what is that number? I'm not, I know how to make a complaint to ATSIC and I don't need, look, half of this letter back to me is giving me links online. It's like, excuse me, I am not looking for websites to find out general knowledge. I am asking you, Jason Battles, what you actually did in your responsibility as trustee under laws that operate where you are obligated by law to perform certain functions. Now, all I did was ask you after you said that you had made that complaint, what's the case file number? Now, it's a simple thing. That is not revealing any confidential information. You can have a case file number. It means nothing unless the person that you're speaking to will actually give information across on that. And unless you're an involved party in that particular case file number, you don't have the authority unless one of the parties involved actually gives you that authority to know that information. So Jason Bettles actually giving me that file, that number to prove that you lodged it, that you actually did something, was not breaching confidentiality of the client. It was merely proving that you actually did what you said you did. Then I can check up with them and find out, yes, you did do it. It's there. What you actually did, I cannot find out because it is confidential information. But rather than provide me with a case file number where he reported Adrian Brannock's activity to the relevant body, he fobs me off with, I can make my own complaint. I know that, Jason. And that's why you're part of um, my video today and why you get tick of the week. You are just such a... You state so many redundant things. Why would I need you to quote parts of websites? I know why. It's to pad out your letter, to make it look like you're responding. But what you're actually doing is frustrating the efforts of trying to find out what's going on behind Adrian Brannock's activities. And the long, go long and ongoing association you had with him before you actually became his bankruptcy trustee is why I'm getting a letter like this. Because the thing I find, no, wait till you get to the next page and what he asks of me. <laughs> Hang on. Well, we know about Adrian Brennock, that it was the ATO, the Australian Tax Office, that served a bankruptcy notice on him. And it was Adrian Brennock who attempted to get that set aside. It did not work. He was made a bankrupt. And that became official September 2018. And Jason Bettles took charge of his bankrupt estate. At that time, Jason Bettles had a prior relationship and knew full well of the activities that had been going on in Wollumbin Horizons. He had sought advice on how to deal with the situation that Wollumbin Horizons was in, the situation that you can hear about in the Voxes. However, the situation that Wollumbin Horizons was finding itself in was actually painted to be more because a lot of those actions were actually coming against Adrian Brannock and Mark Darwin, especially from the tax office. Uh, but with the side of the superannuation and illegal use of superannuation and also not issuing uh, certificate shares. That was all part of what was going on at the time where Adrian Brennock went and sat down, had a chat to someone, said, look, these are all the problems going on and this is the way I'm looking at dealing with it. And this other person, like Jason Bettles, 
turns around and gives him information and they talk about it. Now he is a forensic accountant. One would actually think that he would be knowing more about the intricate details of accountancy and that associated with companies, the insolvency. So when he gets down here and he says that they don't give out advice, I, my mouth dropped. It's like, well, why do people come to you then? They've got an insolvency problem. What do you do? Take instructions and not give any advice? Where do they get the advice from? Oh, from a forensic accountant, which you are. So you would be giving advice. Because, um, let's go to the next page. Oops, wrong one. Um, so here on, with, on this page... Jason Bettles says, as this firm does not provide accounting slash tax slash super advice, if you would like me to consider your claim in more depth, you will need to provide specific details. Now, he just said, this firm does not provide accounting slash tax slash super advice. So none of that's associated with companies or insolvency or accounting. Is that what you're saying, Jason? That a forensic accountant does not provide any advice on anything to do with companies like accounting, tax and super? I'm a little bit confused because if you're a forensic accountant and don't give advice, what's your actual purpose? Oh, but then again, you exist to feed off insolvent com companies and bankrupt people and then you turn around and say we've got no funds to cover the costs of anything and then you say well we can't investigate because that would take money and we need money to investigate because in our business in our job where we have responsibilities of law to actually make sure that these activities are not going on and if they're reported to do the right thing but if you report that wrong thing to us we can't investigate it because there's no money to investigate it even though we are required by law to actually check into these things we don't have to check into them if there's no money to investigate it that can come out of the bankrupt's funds or in the case of a company out of the liquidated funds. So in other words, these bottom feeders, if they can't get their slice of a broken company or a broken person's financial parts right in the beginning, they will not do their job to ensure that the law is upheld because there's no money to pay for it. And this is the excuse that you constantly get from people like this. There's no money to do it. We have to... Now, Jason Bettle said that he wrote to the creditors to ask if they would fund investigations. Now, the creditor is the Australian Tax Office. So what Jason Bettles is expecting that after he, as a bankruptcy trustee, as a forensic accountant, reported his client to the ATO and what had gone on, and the ATO said, well, we're not going to fund investigations. There's no money to investigate it. I think you're stretching the truth a little bit here, Jason Bettles. I really do. But then again, <laughs> seems like you've been doing that a fair bit, which is why the corporate regulator has returned to the fray in its ongoing campaign to rub you out. And I'll join in that fray. Now also in that email communication, I advised Jason Bettles that he was actually in the Voxes and that the information that he provided to me in the past appeared to be misleading. And I told him that I wasn't going to provide specific information because I'm the one giving all the information and all I get from them is the fob off, you know. Oh, we can't tell you because it's client privilege. 
oh, we can't tell you that because here's at six you know website address click on there make a complaint here's ATO's thing click on that and make a complaint it's like I'm not interested I know what I'm going to do Jason I'm interested in what you've done who at the ATO do I need to contact to verify that you have actually contacted them and ensured asked whether they want to fund further investigations into what your bankrupt has been up to that's all I want to know. A specific name, I can contact them directly myself. A, a specific contact, not a link to a website, okay? I'm checking up on what you've done, not what I'm going to do. And the same with in the acts that require that the, the trustees in any situations like this report to the courts and report to the relevant bodies the activities of that person. It stimulates a case file number. Again, where's that case file number, Jason Bettles? You can't give me a case file number because you didn't put in anything, did you? Secondly, you can't give me a direct contact or even tell me whether the creditor will be funding investigations because you never contacted them, did you? You can't give out those things that you don't have, but you can certainly write this pathetic little letter. Sorry, that's a woofer. <laughs> this pathetic little letter that actually gives me a link to websites. Oh, what do you think you're in kindergarten? Do you think you're playing with kids here? Sorry, if you're not going to take this seriously, this is why I've given you dick of the week. Because seriously, to be in this, this situation where the corporate regulator, you're already on their radar. They want you. They are determined. It's an ongoing campaign to rub you out, to get rid of you, to strip you of your liquidator's ticket and ban you for life. And you better hope that that's all they actually achieve because that's probably going to carry some jail time too, won't it? You'll be sitting in be behind bars. And it's only a matter of time because ATSIC want you. If you were actually smart, you'd actually get out of this business right now before you actually have more and more come out that shows that now they've got so much to add. Look, it's not just here. It's this one. It's this one. It's this one. I mean... You're existing of broken businesses and broken people. You are the lowest bottom feeders. And then you turn around and you say, oh, well, I can't investigate it because there's no money. It's your bloody job, you idiot. What the hell are you getting paid for in your job capacity? As a director, as an employee of this company, what the hell do you actually get paid to do? Anything? your job and the thing being that he doesn't want to go through and find out the evidence that's against him well mate you have got just as many hours in the week as anybody else and you know what when your own ass is on the line you make the time rather than turn around and go well sorry <laughs> I don't have the time. We can't pay someone to go through 25 and a half hours. The thing is, Jason, this is you. You that the accusation's coming against, not the business. So you can't come up with 25 and a half hours to save your own ass to find out what's actually been said? If you would like me to consider your claim, in more depth you will need to provide specifics. Well, I will gladly provide specifics, Jason. When you tell me what the case file number is when you made the complaint late last year, that's all you've got to do. Case file number and a specific contact at the ATO who you contacted to ask if they wanted to fund investigations into Adrian Brannock's activity. That's all. 
you provide me with that, that's five seconds work of looking up and seeing what you did. There's the case file number. There's the person's name. I contacted at the ATO. Bang. Done. No cost. No worry. Done. You provide me with that and I will provide you with details. You can review what kind of a poop you've got yourself into. So let's just look specifically at when I asked for the case number for where he actually made the complaint against his bankrupt Adrian Brennock. He gives me, as previously advised, you may contact the Australian Securities and Investment Commission with a link in respect of concerns regarding the affairs of companies that may be related to the bankrupt. And as I previously advised Jason, I know that. I want to know what you did, okay? And I know that if you have lodged a complaint with them, there is a case file number. That's all I want to see is a case file number. Because when I'm putting forward my evidences, that case file number will show that you actually did something. But if that case file doesn't actually exist, well, does it exist, Jason? Or did you just write it in a pretty little letter and think that that was going to suffice? Now, as for the creditor of the bankrupt, writing to them and asking them with everything that I'd put forward, then do you want to investigate his activities? Well, again, all I wanted was someone to specifically contact myself to follow up that you had contacted the creditor. And what do you give me? In respect to your request for contact details for the Australian Tax Office, I note that the ATO direct tip-offs regarding illegal activity and behaviour of concern should be provided using the tip-off form on their website. Again, this is generic information when you are asked to provide specific information. So let's go further on to the breaches in the Bankruptcy Act. Oh look, now we can go to the Australian Financial Securities Authority. And yes, we will definitely be going there because that, I believe they also deal with superannuation. And superannuation is becoming a really huge, huge crossover between the land and the commercial and the breaches where there cannot be any connection between those investing their superannuation funds and those investing in the land and the community and getting an interest out of it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's another video. Now, the only bit of information in here that might actually be helpful or even informative but cannot be relied upon because Jason Bettles is being deliberately evasive and uncooperative in any way, shape or form. After I'm the one that's done all the work, he hasn't had to have any cost involved in this. I have given him the information and all he has to do is check it and then make a complaint based on that. That's all he had to do. It's no biggie. So when he turns around and says that my office has... Sorry about that. So when he says, my office has sought further information from the bankrupt regarding matters addressed in your prior correspondence and in response, the bankrupt solicitor advised that he will be compiling a response to be finalised within the next month. So in other words, Jason, you haven't done anything. You, you keep fobbing it off to other people to do, which is why you've got the nerve to turn around and ask me if you are interested in providing funding. Oh, sorry, got to trip over that word because it... Are you interested in providing funding to conduct further investigations? Please contact my office and then an estimate of our costs can be provided. 
<laughs> That's really why you got Dick of the Week. Yeah, I just can't believe that you actually had the goal to put that in there. It's your job to make sure your bankrupt is doing the right thing, not mine. And where is the ATO? Uh, are you going to tell me that they're not going to fund this? That now that Nyepi is actually involved in a project worth $37 million where they might be able to get a bigger chunk of what they're owed by Adrian Brennock back? Are you telling me they wouldn't fund that? Are you telling me that that illegal phoenix that was done a few years ago by, let's not mention their name, and, but Stephen Starts knows them very well. That's the current liquidator of Wollumban Horizons. But anyway, Jason Bettles wants me to fund investigations to look at what my complaints are that I've given him, I've given him evidence. It, what more investigations do you actually need? Oh, would you like to change certain facts? Well, what I would be asked here is to fund investigations that Jason Bettles would, would employ somebody that would provide the results that clear him and he's bankrupt because, yeah. Do you see why you got Dick of the Week, Jason? You would ask me to give you money to get no facts whatsoever because even if I did provide the funding, you wouldn't be able to tell me because it's confidential. And the thing being is that I should not have to pay you to do your job. It's not my job to be a forensic accountant. I did not take on the bankruptcy estate of Adrian Brennock. You did. It is your job to make sure that everything's done right. And if it's not, well, guess what? You wear the costs of correcting that. Not other people. And to turn around and say, oh, but, you know... What he says down here about that there's no funds, it's like, duh, I know that. So why the hell do forensic accountants actually take on all the things that where they say, well, we can't investigate this because there are no funds. We have to get someone to investigate it because there are no funds. If someone might sponsor us in investigating our responsibility under the law to make sure these things are correct and <laughs> you know, let's not worry about that because we can always claim that we had no funds to investigate and we did the right thing because we've got no funds to investigate. So even if someone does make a complaint, we don't have to investigate that they're doing the wrong thing because we don't have to investigate. We've got no funds and it's not expected of us to investigate when we've got no funds. The law says that we don't have to investigate when we've got no funds to pay for that investigation. Well, the investigation is actually against you, Jason, not the bankruptcy itself in that way too now. I mean, well, yes, it is against both. It's against Adrian Brennock's activities and now yours and how you seem to be deliberately hampering any efforts to actually investigate Adrian Brennock. Now, you type this paragraph here, well, your secretary typed it, and you signed the letter, that says um, you have actually written to the bankrupt and that the bankrupt solicitor is compiling a response. Well, the bankrupt solicitor, okay, would cost money. He's a bankrupt. How does he pay for that solicitor? Hmm? If he can afford a solicitor to write his response to his bankruptcy trustee, he's got more money than what you know about. Oh, sorry, more money than you're letting on he knows about, that you know about. 
How does a bankrupt afford to take this problem into a solicitor, spend hours and hours describing the situation, to then write a letter back in response to you that costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars? Where's the bankrupt coming up with that money? Well, we all know where the bankrupt is coming up with that. We all know that that solicitor would would be someone in the employ of Nightcap on Mingimble and Nightcap on Mingimble funds are paying again for actions that are specifically against Adrian Brannock. So, who is the bankrupt's solicitor? Jason Bettles? Is that a secret too? Like when you made the ATSIC report? Is the case file number a secret too? Well, when it does go further and further with ATSIC, and they find out that there is no case number. Oh, but there is, and you're just not telling me because you don't want to tell me anything. You're just playing games. Well, I'm not playing games with you anymore. I've just... <laughs> I think I've given you enough chances to actually do the right thing. And I think that it is time now to go for the corporate regulator in their ongoing campaign to rub out Jason Bettles. They're pretty determined to get him. Again, knowingly assisted a scheme. <laughs> Described in the statement of, cla of claim as a phoenix. See, the thing was that when Adrian Brannock did put Wollumbin Horizons into liquidation, Jason Bettles of Worrells didn't want to do the liquidation. So he ended up at Starts, Stephen Starts's at um, Vincent's. And he's now the liquidator. Now after that was done, then Adrian Brannock, the year later, becomes a bankrupt and Jason Bettles becomes his bankruptcy trustee. So for some reason, Jason Bettles pushed away representing Wollumbin Horizons as the liquidator. And why would that be, Jason? Because Adrian Brannock had told you exactly of the situation that was going on and how he might actually find a way out of all the problems, not only with Wollumbin Horizons, but all the personal ones that he was having that were coming in associated with the company. That's why you didn't want to take on the liquidation, isn't it? That's why you can't be accused of performing the Phoenix, helping to perform the Phoenix manoeuvre of Wollumbin Horizons or the land of 322 Kyogle Road that was then bought back and confirmed bought back by Adrian Brennock through NCV Enterprises, which he is a major shareholder with through Nyepi Proprietary Limited, again, where he moved his shares in bankruptcy into his wife's name to avoid them being seized. Now, these are all things that a forensic accountant who knows you're supposed to be the one that picks all these little details out. And I've provided you all this information and all you're doing is showing that you are still complicit and protecting your bankrupt, Adrian Brennock. And you haven't done a very good job of it. And you certainly haven't done a very good job of protecting yourself either because of what the communications between you and Adrian Brennock prior to Wollumbin Horizons going into liquidation and you not wanting to take on the liquidation, but you would take on his bankruptcy a year later. Yes, there's prior knowledge, isn't there? That's why you didn't want to take on Wollumbin Horizons. Prior knowledge. So with that prior knowledge, when you became Adrian Brennock's bankruptcy trustee, you already knew all the breaches that he had committed within the act and you kept your mouth closed. And when you are questioned over it, now you give letters like this. Yeah. Dick of the week? Well, 
I could say a lot more, but I'm not going to. I think I've said enough. I think Jason has said enough himself where he gave no information, very generic, when he was asked to be specific. And through the communications, you can see that there is a clear avoidance of dealing with any of the subjects. Now, given the scenario that this would be somebody that would actually go, well, thank you very much for bringing this all to our attention. You have actually saved us so much money in investigations. Please, can you help me more? Rather than that, I'm getting the opposite. And that leads to a lot of suspicion, especially when at every stage now, I am getting things from people where, I can't tell you that because it falls under privilege. No, it doesn't. There are so many things now that people are saying, we can't tell you that because it falls under privilege. It's confidential information. No, it's not. And that's why I actually ask you this information because it's not privileged confidential information. And if you cannot provide that, it actually indicates that you are deliberately hampering any investigations into these activities, which then makes you complicit with covering up the activities of Adrian Brennock. Well, I'm not going to argue the case here because there's a lot more evidence that I haven't brought out here. And as I said, Jason, if you want to know, provide me with two things. The case file number from ATSIC where you made this complaint also, too, don't you have to make a record to the court and advise them of that you have made a complaint to ATSIC and there is a problem with your bankrupt? So information about that would be nice, too. Just like uh, a case file number. No confidential information has to be given out. Then, when it comes to the ATO, you had to make a complaint and go directly and be specific about your particular bankrupt, Adrian Brennock. You had dealings with people prior to this, those that actually made him bankrupt. There is contact details and probably a case file number that is directly linked to Adrian Brennock at the ATO. Again, these are not confidential information you can give out this information. What those numbers mean in the case file, what's behind them, what information, that can remain confidential depending on what scenario. But the case numbers themselves, no. Contact details, direct contact details, not generic website <laughs> tip-off lines. That's what I'm after. You provide me that and I'll start showing you what else I've got. And on that note, I'm going to leave my dick of the week. <laughs> Sorry. I shouldn't laugh. I mean, because this guy, Jason, he's in serious poop. I mean, he's on the target board for uh, the corporate regulator. And even though they've been knocked back, they want him. You know, it's kind of like a dog with a bone. They're after it. After you, Jason. It's only a matter of time. Because they will fund the investigations. They will not come up with bloody excuses like you do. Absolutely pathetic. Even when you're given the information and the investigation is virtually half done for you, you still come up with, oh, we can't do it because there's no funds. Well, tell me, there's no funds, but do you get a wage each week? Do you actually get paid each week to go to work and do a job? Because this would actually be part of it. Or uh, do you not show up unless someone actually pays for you to show up to work that day? Like if there's no one's bankrupt account or liquidator's account that you can book up your time to, do you actually show up to work at all? Or can you only show up to work when a liquidating company or a bankrupt, com a bankrupt estate can pay for you to show up and do your job? 
No. You get paid. And whether you can recoup that money through other people, that's all you're interested in. I think you've got a bloody nerve turning around and asking me to fund investigations to clear your own name. Are you kidding me? You want me to fund investigations to clear your own name. And if I'm interested to please contact my office and then an estimation of our costs can be provided. <laughs> you want me to get a quote off you for your costs on how much it would cost you to investigate yourself. You're pathetic, dick of the week. <laughs> oh dear. And on that note, I'm going to say catch you on the next one because I've got a few I want to get done today. <laughs> Bye.